Hey, Natalie here. Today we are making gluten-free jam-filled donuts. And who doesn't like donuts? Think about all those movies where you see the police cars racing and you're wondering, oh my god, which crime has happened to really figure out they're in line to get a fresh donut. And these are so delicious that it will fool anyone to think it's the real deal. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Jam-filled donuts, fresh out of your own home. I take pride in the words, Ich bin ein Berliner. I always have to giggle when I see that speech. I know I shouldn't, it is a serious matter. At the same time, he's really saying in German, I am a jam-filled donut. And I mean, how can you not find it funny when somebody says, I'm a jam-filled donut? So yes, a Berliner, which I grew up with, is a jam-filled donut. And there's a small difference between American donut, Canadian donut, Dublin donut, and German donuts. And my favorite donuts are definitely the German donuts or the ones in Dublin. In today's recipe, I'm pretty much making sort of a weird marriage between an Irish donut and a German donut, and when they got together, they got gluten free. So let's get started on it. I measured about 125 milliliters of milk or half a cup, and I needed to get it to body temperature, so around 90 degrees. I heated the milk up in the microwave and waited for it to cool down a little bit. And how do I know it's the right temperature? Certainly you can do the more scientific way and use a thermometer. I normally just stick my finger in and see if I think it's a bit too hot. And yes, this is a bit too hot, so I'm gonna wait a little bit for the milk to cool down before I put my yeast in it. I also measured 100 grams of butter, or in this case, I actually used 100 grams of a vegan substitute, and I think, and I have to double check, that's about 100 grams of butter, and I melted it. Now I need to measure all the different flours I'm going to use for this recipe. And you can see on the left-hand side, all the gluten-free flours are used in this recipe. <clears throat> Most recently, I learned that many celiacs have also a slight allergy to corn. It seems like some people's stomach realizes that corn is gluten, which it isn't, but that seems to be a reaction to it. So I'm going to substitute today corn starch with tapioca and potato starch. So potato starch and tapioca starch seems to be a finer starch than corn starch. So the crumb is a little Little bit more delicate and a little bit smaller than if I would use cornstarch. I'm going to add now 120 grams of sugar. I added a little bit too much sugar, but too much sugar never hurts really for this recipe. I'm going to add one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of vanilla. You can also use half a tablespoon. It really depends on your flavor preference. I rather use like one tablespoon because I like the intensity of the vanilla flavor in it. I'm going to add two eggs. And I'm gonna add one egg yolk. To do that though, I'm gonna to have to separate the egg white from the egg yolk. And I'm showing how I'm doing that in my chocolate sponge cake. I'm gonna add my butter. I'm gonna add my milk. And I'm gonna add one tablespoon and one teaspoon of dry yeast. I'm also gonna add now half a cup of psyllium husk and half a cup of water. The very cool thing about gluten-free yeast though is you can combine it with using your handheld mixer compared to regular are glutinous dough where you're just gonna have to knead for 20 minutes. This looks very much like a batter than a dough, but but the psyllium husk did not have yet a chance to absorb all the different liquids and expand. So I'm gonna let it sit for about one to two hours, depending how much time I have. And at that point, the psyllium husk will have absorbed all the liquid as well as the different starches, and it should look much more like a dough than a batter. So it's a yeast dough, so it needs definitely a heat, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit, or around like 25, 30 degrees Celsius. And right now it is still a little bit too cold in our sunroom, so I'm gonna put it in a heating cap. I'm I'm gonna cover it with a tea towel or a kitchen towel and wait for like two, three hours. So it should be rising to double its size and then I can deep fry my jelly filled dough. And since the weather is pretty nice today, I'm gonna go for a spin. And when I come back, I'm gonna make the donuts. just got back from my lovely spin. It was 50 kilometers and the weather was just beautiful, which as you can imagine in Dublin, it's not as common. I'm gonna check on my yeast dough and voila, 
It's almost double the size and I'm ready now to make my berliner or my jelly filled donut. So in the recipes, they normally talk about rolling the dough into small little bowls and then deep frying them. But I found a way which works much better for me, which is like using a biscuit cutter. So the batter, which was very loose earlier, is now much more like a dough. It's still very sticky and very fragile. But that's also pretty common for gluten-free yeast dough. I'm gonna pat it a little bit till it's about like an inch or 2.5 centimeters thick and I'm gonna use my cookie cutter. I'm gonna add also a little bit of flour to my baking tray where I'm gonna transfer them to. I'm gonna use my cake spatulas to transfer them and I'm gonna repeat the process until I pretty much have no dough left. So out of the dough I got about 11 and a quarter donuts. So I'm gonna add about one liter of oil into my pot. I have been frying a lot so I have been buying the three liter bottle of oil. So I'm gonna have to heat up the oil now to 335 degree Fahrenheit or 170 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind that gluten-free flour have a much lower smoking point than regular flour. So that's the reason why we are not as traditionally frying the donuts at 380 or 375 degree Fahrenheit, but at a much lower temperature. And I'm going to use this thermometer to make sure I'm going to get 335 degree Fahrenheit. It reached now 335 degree Fahrenheit and I'm going to slowly add now my donut. So it's starting to turn golden brown now after like one and a half minutes and I'm going to turn it over now. If you over fry them, they get very oily and I personally don't really like that. The donut is ready now. I'm going to quick check on the internal temperature. So the internal temperature is 185, which should be good for yeast. I'm going to cut it open to double check. It's a little bit underdone on one side. You can see how the dough here is more on the raw side still. The temperature is a little bit too hot so I'm going to turn it down a little bit. It reads a nice 190 degrees so we're going to fry them on two and a half minutes on each side at 335 degree Fahrenheit. So I have to constantly monitor my oil temperature and see how much it fluctuates. If it gets up to 350 you can see how much browner the donut turned out to be than when it was hovering at 320. Ah this is hot. Voila here are my donuts. The biscuit cutter definitely helps to create those really nice even looking donuts if you're not very good in rolling rolling out balls and frying them evenly. So now I'm gonna fill the donuts with some jelly. I like to fill my donuts with my favorite jam, so I'm a big fan of blackcurrant and I'm gonna put some blackcurrant filling into them. To fill the donuts, I'm gonna use a piping bag. Now, something really important is you need to get jam which is not too liquid because otherwise it's gonna ooze all over the place and it's uh, not very attractive and a bit messy. So this has a pretty good consistency, it's pretty stiff. I always like with piping bags to squeeze some of the excess out just to make sure it's working well. I found it helpful to create a small little hole in the donut before I put in the jam filling. And I'm gonna put pretty much the piping back into the donut and squeeze till the jam comes out. And then you have a jam filled donut. If I have any extra jam, I just squeeze it back into my jam jar. If I wanna make sure it looks pretty, I'm gonna sprinkle powdered sugar over it. And the last thing I gotta do is bite into one of those donuts. Good stuff. That hits so the spot after a cycle. I hope you enjoyed watching the video on gluten-free donuts and if so, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and check the bell to get notifications about any upcoming videos, especially if you want to learn more about gluten-free baking or find new recipes. And if you have any comments or feedbacks, please pop them below in the comments box. I would love to hear from you. And I'll see you next week where I'm going to try to figure out how to improve my process for a black forest cake. See you then. Bye.